Hello everyone and welcome to the third and final interview with the Young Green co-chair candidates. Um, I say final because as of today uh, the fourth candidate has dropped out of the race so Patrick McAllister is no longer standing so we just have three candidates for you. Um, on our YouTube channel already there is already two of those interviews. We have one with Kelsey Trevitt um, and also with Jane Baston. And tonight we are joined by the third of the candidates who I'll be introducing very, very shortly. But before we get to that, um, if you're new to Bright Green, please do head below. And if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, it means that you won't miss any of the videos that we're putting out in the future. You can stay up to date with what we're doing. We have elections for the Green Party executive coming up very, very soon. We're gonna be running a series of similar interviews to these with the candidates for those positions as well. So do go below, hit that subscribe button and you won't miss a thing. It doesn't cost you a penny. Um, so without further ado, um, I am going to introduce our co-chair candidate for this evening. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have Henry with me. Hi. <laughs> Hi Henry, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you, how are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Um, so we're gonna go straight into it and hopefully a relatively straightforward question for you to start with. Uh, why are you standing to be co-chair of the Young Greens? Uh, so I'm, uh, I, I, I'm standing for co-chair because I really want us to, uh, as, as the Green Party, as the Young Greens push, and push towards say, uh, a push towards a more radical um, future. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, socialists in the Green Party. I think it's the most socialist party that we have uh, currently. Um, and I'd like us to continue it. I think a lot of young Greens especially uh, are quite uh, socialist in nature, even if it's not socialist in name. I think a lot of young people do really care about, for instance, the rights, um, well, labor rights. Um, and they are really invested in trans rights, for instance, in, um, in, 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 in putting an end to, for instance, issues like police brutality. So I think a lot of uh, young Greens are socialists. Um, and so I really uh, want to drive that forwards and, 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 and take on that opportunity. Um, so that's why I'm standing. Thanks so much, Henry. So uh, you talked a little bit there about, I guess, your politics and mm. how you see the Young Greens kind of tying into that. Um, I wondered, a lot of our viewers uh, will perhaps not know huge amounts about you. So I wondered if you could give them a little bit of a taste of why you think you personally um, yeah. are the best placed person to be co-chair for the Young Greens. Yeah. Uh, so I have, uh, well, I have my origins actually in the Labour Party. I'm from uh, a northern constituency called the High Peak. Um, and it's a very, uh, my local Labour Party in, uh, in Glossopdale, in the High Peak, is very socialist. So that's, um, so that's where I actually uh, started developing my own ideas and then I moved to the Green Party. Um, I have a lot of leadership skills, uh, which is why I'm going for specifically co-chair. So I have a background in teaching. I have been a youth officer uh, for the Labour Party. Uh, and uh, I also have a lot of just just a lot of opinions, just a lot of motivation. And I really uh, want to support the Young Greens in achieving its goals, because already I know um, it's really interested in, for instance, uh, banning uh, single use plastic in, um, in supporting trans rights. Um, so I really want to just push that forward with my leadership skills. So uh, yeah. And so you, you touched on it a little bit there in terms of yeah. what you want to do as, as co-chair of the Young Greens, but um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what your vision uh, for the Young Greens would be. And if you were elected in a year's time at the end of your term, uh, looking back on your year, what would you, where would you like to see the Young Greens being? What would you like to have seen that it had achieved? Uh, so I know that it's already got um, some interest in issues such as uh, the decriminalization of sex work. Uh, and in a year's time, my vision is that we will have really pushed the government to seriously consider the decriminalization of it, because I know that there's some talk about there's going towards the Nordic model, which doesn't actually work to work for sex workers uh, because it criminalizes the, um, the, the buyers. Uh, and I'd rather us just push towards the New Zealand model, uh, which just completely blanket decriminalizes sex work, um, which which if you listen to sex workers, makes sex workers feel safer because there's no stigma, for instance, when it goes to the police. 
So I'd like the Young Greens to um, have at least made some headway in uh, pushing the government to uh, consider that, uh, the Green Party as well to consider that, because um, I know that we have some influence on the executive board as co-chairs. Uh, so that's definitely uh, part of my vision. And so I guess, what, what does that look like in practice in terms of, uh, you know, there have been people campaigning around decriminalization, decriminalization of sex work for a very long time. Um, and uh, there are there are movements, there are sex worker led organizations that have been pushing on this, campaigning on it. Um, why do you, I guess, like what, 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 how would you see the Young Greens playing a role within those campaigns? And what would you see as like the strategy for the Young Greens to meaningfully get uh, the government, as you say, to start considering for decriminalization of sex work? Uh, so I think it, uh, the, the, the starting points are just really raising it, um, you know, being quite vocal on the uh, Green Party executive board. Uh, so as co-chairs, it'd be part of our role uh, to represent the Young Greens on that board. And so vocalizing the issue on that board will just be a really good first step. Another first step is just um, through a media campaign, uh, just really getting the word out uh, to the public about uh, the benefits that decriminalization would do and to raise awareness about how, um, how it would affect just British people, about 60,000 people take part in sex work in the UK. Uh, so just really, really normalizing it in that way and just get and, and, and raising awareness, I think is a good starting point. And then from there, you can start petitioning. Uh, and then uh, really just through petitioning, you can push that towards local councils, you can get local council members on board, you can get the MPs on board. Uh, and then through that, you can reach Parliament. So one of the things you touched on there is uh, the Green Party executive. And as you say, the Young Greens co-chairs um, sit on on the Green Party executive. They they hold two of the well, their one seat as a job share amongst uh, I think about fifteen or sixteen people mm. on there. Um, the Young Greens co-chairs also have a range, a whole range of other positions within the wider Green Party, including on the political committee, on various subcommittees of the executive, yeah. various bits and bobs. Um, and so, you're if you are elected, you're going to have a really strong voice. Um, in the wider Green Party, not just in the Young Greens. Um, so the question I wanted to put to you is, what do you think are the biggest opportunities and challenges that the Green Party as a whole um, is currently facing? Uh, so, I mean, one big opportunity is that more people are uh, very invested in having, um, in, 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 in defending ourselves from climate change. I think uh, more and more people in the UK are becoming more aware of uh, the dangers of climate change. I know, for instance, in, in actually the high peak where I'm from, there's been a lot of flooding um, and that has been associated with climate change. So I think a lot of people in Britain are very much more aware of climate change and the documentaries that have come out have made them more aware and everything. Uh, and so this is often an opportunity now to, because we are the party fighting against climate change as a priority, I think this is an opportunity for us now just to, uh, yeah, just 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 to gather more people and to bring them into the Green Party and saying we are the party that's really seriously uh, trying to challenge climate change. A challenge that we have is that we, uh, even though in the polls we tend to be the third biggest party, a challenge is that we're still you know, we still have a smaller percentage than, for instance, the Labour and the Tories. And so we need to really overcome that just by being more vocal, uh, speaking more to the average person, um, not just, you know, really just uh, closing ourselves up to talk to other Green Party members or other, you know, far left leftist people. We need to speak more to the average person and just really communicate that we are a viable option and just as good as Labour and the Tories. And so what does that look like in practice then in terms of that point around, um, I guess, communicating to a wider audience and, as you say, making the Greens appear to be a viable option? Um, what does that look like in practice? When you say making the Greens look like a viable option, do you mean that, um, you know, uh, demonstrating to people that the Greens can win elections or that the Greens have a raft of policies on a whole range of issues? Or what is it specifically you mean by that? Um, and then I guess, yeah, like in terms of uh, campaigning approaches, in terms of wider politics, how do you see uh, that working in practice in terms of reaching uh, that wider audience? Because there'll be many in the party who will say, well, we've been trying to do that for a really long, top, really long time. And we're making progress, but it's been slow. So what do you think is the, the approach that's needed in regards to that? 
I think uh, we uh, I think I think it all begins with the doorstep. You 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 appear at people's front door and you just talk to them about issues um, issues that affect those people directly. Not just talking about the wider national global issues, um, but talking more about the local issues. And uh, so, for instance, on the topic of climate change, I mean, you could you you would go to uh, someone uh, at their door and just start talking about, you know, what about that flooding or the really scorching hot summers, you know, the, the, the heat waves that have been really affecting people in terms of their health. Um, you bring it to, you bring um, these issues closer to that individual. Um, and I know that local Green Party members uh, in these different constituencies have been doing that. So I think, uh, you know, in addition to making these these big issues more local to the individual, you we we as a party need to invest more in uh, just really supporting those local elections. And I know we have been doing it. We actually made a really good gain uh, recently as well in terms of local seats, uh, but we just need to do it more. And so again, I guess on that last point around um, election campaigning, now there are, again, some in the Green Party who would say that the stuff that you talked about at the beginning of our conversation around campaigning around issues like the decriminalisation of sex work or or whatever issue it is, and fighting election campaigns uh, that are designed to get people elected um, are to an extent mutually exclusive in the effort that could be being put into getting people elected is instead being put into running issue-based campaigns and the Green Party is a political party, it's not a pressure group, it's not a campaigning organisation um, and therefore those two things, um, engaging in that issue-based campaign is a distraction from election campaigning work. So how do you see those two things as fitting together and um, I guess in terms of in relation to the Young Greens, how would you see working on campaigning on issues like the criminalization of sex work fitting in alongside campaigning to get greens elected in local government and national government as well uh, so firstly on just um combining the issue based the, the issue based campaigning with elections i uh i mean yeah i mean when you when say you're running for a local seat you just communicate that, you, that these are your policies really you just again you bring it down to uh you you make them more local to people and you just and and and, and more human um so if i were to go to someone on the doorstep and i would just say look we're standing uh for the council uh here are our policies including decriminalization of sex work they might be like what that's you know that feels weird that feels wrong uh but you just communicate in simple terms as well just really this is about the human involved like for instance i mean sex workers feel really unsafe with the stigma uh they feel really unsafe when they go to report um you know to you know report crime to the police uh so communicating that to the person uh yeah it's issue based but you know this is this is this is these are the policies that you're uh trying to platform and so just communicating that to the person um would i think you know i can i can see it being uh, successful because you're bringing that humanity in um because you're showing the effect uh that you're showing the effect that campaigning for those issues would have so if you're campaigning for the criminalization then you're you know you're trying to say well it, you know if we were successful um we would make sex workers feel safer um now in terms of combining uh the young greens role um and and and, and campaigning for elections i think the young greens because we are a huge force within the party and we and we and we do have a position of influence i think just really uh just investing our energy is uh into campaigning for those local elections and supporting those local candidates you know whether they're you know up north in scotland or down south of in uh, I don't know, cornwall uh just really um just just investing uh a lot of energy into that and um, and so uh in terms of the kind of uh I guess issue-based campaigning and uh, putting elections to, to a side for one minute, although you could obviously bring that yeah. in as well. Um, the, the Green Party and Green Politics was born out of social movements. It was born out of um, the environmental movement, uh, the peace movement, uh, the um, liberation movements of the 1960s and 70s for, 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 for women's rights, for LGBT rights, the anti-racist movement and so on. Um, and so the Green Party has always had a space um within the wider left within the uk what do you see the green party's uh where do, what do you see the green party's role in that kind of wider left infrastructure and ecology um within the uk 
think because we are the third largest party in a lot of polls and a lot of elections and uh, you know on you know those special occasions we are the leading party i think we are you know i think i think we hold the opportunity to bring in all um all of those groups uh together um and i think we are the party where that solidarity can shine Brilliant. And I've got one final question for you. Uh, and hopefully, uh, well, I mean, I, I always think it's, it's nice to end on a slightly less serious note in these uh, kind mm -hmm. of conversations. So my final question is hopefully straightforward. Um, who in the Green Party inspires you the most and why? Okay, so, um, yeah, two people. So there's, uh, you know, uh, uh, no, there's, there's the there's the very uh, famous individual Caroline Lucas. Uh, I think being the first Green Party MP is just really impressive, considering that we uh, considering that Labour and Tory have such a huge uh, I was going to say fan base electorate, <laughs> um, but considering that they are quite huge, I think I think it's really impressive that we have you know got Green MPs now and that she is, was the first one and that's an achievement. Uh, she's certainly gone down in history books. Um, and on a smaller, more local level, um, there is an individual called um, Ben Ali Handash. Uh, he uh, is he was he was someone who I worked with uh, last year and still work with a little bit. And he got me really involved in the Green Party. And he was and he's um, he's he helps lead uh, the, uh, the the campaigns in London. And he's going as well um, for I think he's going as well for a council position in Highbury as well. So he's very involved in the Green Party and he's just inspiring to me because he's just so proactive and so involved and uh, he's so relied on as well. Thank you so much, Henry. Um, it's been Thank an you. absolute pleasure to talk to you this <laughs> evening. You too. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, best of luck in the election. Thank you. Um, and of course, as well as thanking Henry, I have to thank all of you who have watched uh, this interview. Um, as I said at the beginning, this is one of just three um, of the interviews we've been doing with the co-chair candidates. So uh, probably somewhere around my head or down below or on the side somewhere on YouTube, you will find the other interviews with Kelsey and Jane. Please do check those out. Um, as I said at the beginning, uh, we will have uh, a series of interviews coming up with the candidates for the Green Party executive. Um, the candidate list for that is going to be announced very, very shortly. Um, so watch this space for that. If you want to make sure that you don't miss those interviews, the best thing that you can do right now is to head down below and hit that subscribe button and make sure you don't miss a single one of our videos. A few final bits and pieces of housekeeping and admin to say before I let you go. The first is um, that Broke Green is an independent media outlet. We don't have uh, big money backers. We're not funded by billionaires or corporations. We're funded by people like you. So if you are able to, please do head to bright-green.org forward slash donate. And we asked people to set up a donation of just five pounds a month. And that means that we can bring more interviews like this one to you. We can get more articles uh, published on our website and so on. So please do that straight away. While you're on our website, um, we're gonna be running articles written by the candidates from across the Young Greens executive elections, not just the co-chairs. Um, so if you're interested in finding out more um, about the elections, head to our website and you'll find all of them there. If you're a member of the Young Greens, uh, you'll receive a ballot for the co-chair and all of the executive elections and voting will be open from the 3rd of July to the 18th of July. And the last thing for me just to say is if you've agreed with anything Henry has said tonight, if you disagree with anything, please let us know in the comments down below and start a conversation there. Um, that's all from me. Um, so thank you so much for joining us and good night.